Well, we continue now with our special coverage of transportation here in the U.S., turning now to the many subway systems that, of course, get millions of Americans to and from all over the place every single day. Just last month, well, subway passengers on the Orange Line up in Boston jumped out of the windows when the metal siding on the bottom of a car made contact with an electrified rail. And, of course, all that resulted in plenty of smoke and fire. That 11-mile line, one of Beantown's four main lines, in fact, will be closed for 30 days starting August 19th so they can make the repairs. The Boston subway has been around since 1890. Seven. And, of course, you can't talk about subways without talking about the one in New York, which moves more than 9 million people a week underground, but, of course, has become a travel minefield with the station and partial uh, line shutdowns. And last week, New York's Metropolitan Transportation Authority, the MTA, said it was considering, actually, yet another fare hike to keep the system afloat because it may simply run out of money to operate. Keep in mind, of course, New York wants the epicenter of COVID, so a lot fewer folks on the subway for the better part of two years. And doesn't stop there. One of the newer subway systems, the one in D.C., the metro there, well, they were hit by a major computer network problem that caused delays. Meanwhile, that system also facing a $356 million deficit because only 53 percent of pre-COVID riders have actually gotten back on that train. Joining us now to discuss the many challenges now facing the subways is Maryland State Delegate Mark Corman, who is also the chair of the House Subcommittee on Transportation and the Environment, which works with the D.C. area's metro system. There we go. I think that was a full intro. Thank you for being with us. <laughs> we, we appreciate it. Hey, listen. Good morning. Um, good morning. I've, I've been uh, on all three of those subway systems that we just talked about, after, and uh, particularly the one in New York after 10 years of, of, of living there. They're absolutely essential to the way of life in any major city that has one, but they're not always a pleasant experience. There are plenty of issues and plenty of problems. Fundamentally, what is the issue, though? Lack of maintenance? lack of uh, funding or lack of reinvention for the modern needs, travel needs of the country or combination of all three? Yeah, I mean, it's all of the above. I think um, what you've seen in Boston and certainly the system in D.C., which is the one I'm a regular rider of, uh, a real lack of investment. I mean, what gets attention, what gets a ribbon cutting? Uh, it's a new line. It's not replacing rail ties, right? It's not uh, an upgrade to the network system, so you don't have the network outage that D.C. Uh, had yesterday. Uh, but that's the kind of routine work that needs to happen year in and year out for these systems uh, to, to work well. Now, on top of that, the, the lack of uh, maintenance investment that's been done, of course, right now is the ridership issue. I mean, when you mention that deficit, uh, it's because ridership is way down. That's the reason these systems uh, have these deficits. And in fact, rail is down even more than you stated because you were combining bus and rail, and rail is down much further than bus uh, compared to pre-COVID levels. A lot of that will come back, um, but of course, they need dollars. In the meantime, COVID aid from the federal government helped with that, but that is sort of running uh, dry at this point. So they're going to have difficult challenges ahead to keep up with all the maintenance needs and also run the service so they don't lose more riders because the number one thing riders are looking for, in addition to obviously safety, is a regular arriving train so they can get to work on time. But to be fair, too, in terms of maintenance and investment, those were issues long before before COVID. These systems didn't fall apart starting in March of 2020. Oh, yeah, no, they, so what was absolutely. the problem before COVID? No, no, it's exactly what I said, which is, um, well, it's funding, as, as you uh, suggested, but it's also what gets attention, it's expansion. It's not the routine maintenance, right? There is no ribbon cutting for an upgrade to WMATA, the D.C. system's network operating system, even though that's the kind of investment they need. So it's very hard to keep focus on that. Uh, some of the systems have had improvement. I mean, closing the, uh, the orange line in Boston is not unprecedented. Baltimore City, which has a single subway line, about five years ago had to do a 30-day closure for some massive repairs. D.C., we famously, about seven years ago, had a, a one-day closure so they could check an electrical system throughout the uh, throughout the entire uh, network. So, uh, unfortunately, that's the kind of thing and difficult decision you have to make when you haven't spent the prior 30 or 35 years doing the most routine maintenance that needs to be done. And listen, as we get through the pandemic and, and the countless ripple effects of it, obviously, ridership being down is a huge financial hit to all uh, of these systems. And I'm just wondering, on the other side of the fence, too, 
are, are, are public transit systems also, like so many other sectors, having trouble finding workers right now, the actual manpower to complete the necessary uh, work right now because uh, people are simply uh, picking other jobs or, or, or don't want to do it? We've heard so much about the labor shortage in some aspects in this country. Is, is the same true when it comes to public transit? Yeah, we hear more about that on the bus side than the than the rail side for whatever reason. So it's definitely an, an issue and a, and a challenge that might be easing a little bit along with the rest of the great resignation. But the ridership point is is a great one because we've really changed a lot of patterns and people are not commuting into city centers five days a week the way they used to. I don't think they're going to commute no days a week into the city center, but uh, a lot of people uh, in a lot of the office buildings in our major cities have a lot more flexibility now. Now, obviously, there's a lot of non-choice riders, and they still need the system to work uh, every day and, and lots of different hours of the day. But for those base commuters, uh, there's definitely been a change, and the systems need to sign a course, sort of adjust for this. Even though ridership will come back as COVID, you know, hopefully either gets more in the rearview mirror or becomes more of our uh, regular life, um, it's, uh, there's still been some permanent change that these systems are going to have to adjust for because most of them were built to move people in and out of major cities. And before we let you go, obviously, uh, infrastructure bill, the bipartisan one passed, going to pump a lot of money uh, into the system. Uh, will it, how big a difference do you think it will make? And when will the public actually see uh, the, all those dollars come to fruition? Uh, obviously, things like this tend not to move quickly, but uh, what's the latest yeah. on that front? Well, one of the real challenges when that money comes through, and it is going to be helpful for five years to have a significant increase in sort of formula fund investments into transit, in addition to some discretionary programs that could allow some, you know, exciting new things like transitioning to uh, EV buses, for example. One of the challenges is when you're investing in doing that maintenance, it can have a negative effect on service. And outside of New York, where they have multiple lines, most of our systems are two lines, one in each direction. So there's not a lot of redundancy. So when you're fixing a track bed, that really is disruptive to service. So unfortunately, the, it's gonna be in the long term that we're gonna sort of realize the benefits in the short term. It probably means a little bit more pain for the riders as you're doing those repairs and making those uh, investments. But you better do them now before you have more incidents like you know what you showed on the orange line in Boston. Fascinating topic that literally affects how people live their life, how they how they get to and from work, how they shop, how they live. Uh, I know it's not always, uh, Sexy TV, as we say, but it's so critically uh, important. Uh, thanks for giving us some time and sharing some insight on, on a critical topic. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me.